everybody. Today we're going to be doing some simple virtualization at home. I have my Windows 7 machine here and I want to try out some different operating systems but I don't want to reformat my hard drive. I don't want to back up my files and reinstall all of my software to try out these operating systems. So I'm just going to install Oracle VirtualBox, also known as Sun VirtualBox, in my Windows 7 environment and then try out some other operating systems. Today I'm trying out Ubuntu and Red Hat and make those guest operating systems in my Windows 7 environment. This is really easy to do. We're going to download and install Oracle VirtualBox and then we're going to simply create some virtual images. Super easy to install, super easy to configure. Everyone can do this. It's a great way to try out different operating systems. Windows 7 is not the be all and end all of operating systems. There's other wonderful free operating systems out there available for you to try. Ubuntu, Debian, CentOS, MintOS are out there. You can even try Mac OS X server in this environment or Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So all you need to do is download the software, install it on your local machine, and then you're going to have some guest operating systems to configure. So just keep watching, you'll see a step-by-step -step instructions on how to download and install VirtualBox and then how to create a virtual environment for whatever operating system you want. Today my operating systems will be Ubuntu and Red Hat. The first thing you should do is open up a browser and go to virtualbox.org. To learn a little bit more about their product, you click on About on the left-hand side. There's tons of documentation on the website available for you to read. Now click on Download. Right where it says Windows Host, go ahead and click on x86 AMD64 to download it for a Windows installer. It will just take a few minutes to download completely and then you'll be ready to run it. Now that it has finished downloading, go ahead and click on Run. The installer will open up in a few seconds. Select all the default options in the installation. This will be sufficient for most VirtualBox instances. During the installation, your network connection will drop, so if you have anything downloading or any terminal sessions going to remote hosts, those connections will be dropped. Just be aware of that. The VirtualBox installation should just take a few minutes. Once it's completed, you can go ahead and open up VirtualBox and we'll create our first virtual machine. Click on the Machine drop-down menu and then select the option New. The wizard window will appear. This will help you guide you through the rest of your virtual machine configuration. Once you click next, you will see that you get to select your operating system and the operating system version. If you look through the drop down menus, you'll notice there's a number of options for virtual machines from Windows to Mac to Linux. Right now, we're going to select the Linux operating system and then we're going to select the Red Hat as the version type. Now we're going to name our virtual machine. This is just a name to keep track of it within the VirtualBox Manager. This is not the host name of your Linux operating system. After you click Next, you'll see the next window is asking for memory. This is the amount of memory you would like to allocate to this virtual machine while it's running. It will provide a limit on the system resources of the host machine. Once you click next you'll get be given the option to create your virtual hard disk. With VirtualBox your virtual hard disk is simply a very large file. Since this is a new virtual machine we're going to go ahead and create a new virtual hard disk. The default option should be sufficient in most cases but if you wish to later on export your virtual machine to another virtual host that is either VMware or Parallel, then you can go ahead and select a different virtual disk type in this window. But for most people who are new to this product, go ahead and select the default option and click Next. This next window gives you the option to either dynamically allocate your disk space or have it fixed size. Dynamically allocate will only increase the virtual machine file as needed, whereas the fixed size will claim the entire disk space that you specified initially when the virtual machine is initially created. If you want to increase the speed of your virtual machine, go ahead and select Fix. Otherwise, select the default option, dynamically allocate, and click Next. 
This window will give you the option to specify the file location of your virtual machine and how large you would like to initially create your disk space for your virtual machine. You go ahead and select those two options as desired and click Next. Before creating your virtual disk, a summary is given to you. Once you've gone through it, verify, go ahead and click Create. Once your virtual disk has been created, you can complete creating your virtual machine. A summary is provided. Then go ahead and click Create, and your first virtual machine is now complete. You should now see your first virtual machine listed on the left-hand side. If your virtual machine is selected on the right-hand side, you can see all the specifications of your virtual machine. If you go ahead and click on the title, you go ahead and open the window up and modify the settings as desired. Now let's power on our first virtual machine. Click Start. A window will open up. If you notice the warning there, it's just letting you know that your capture is on, which means if you click in the window, your mouse will now be within your virtual machine environment. To release it, hit the control button on the right hand side of your keyboard. Go ahead and click OK, and then a wizard will open up that will help you guide you through your first virtual machine install. Once you click Next, you will come up to select your installation media. By default, it would want to look in most people's D drive. On most computers, that would be your CD drive. If you don't want to do that, you can go ahead and browse for the option, which I'm doing here. I want to go ahead and select my Red Hat ISO as my media installation. The next window is a summary window of your last decisions made. Go ahead and check that and go ahead and click start. Once you do that, the machine will reboot. Now looking for your media option. If you notice here, it went ahead and found my Red Hat ISO. It also gave up a window just about the display, a 24-bit display. Now it's just letting me know about the mouse capture option. I'm going to go ahead and let it capture my mouse. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue on through my Red Hat install like I would normally do on a physical machine. The installation steps will be exactly the same. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a second node just to see two nodes running together. I'm just going to run through the wizard once again for a new virtual machine. The same steps I did previously. I'm just going to call this node 2. It's going to be Linux, Ubuntu. Now my node 2 virtual machine is starting up. I'm just going to fast through through my Ubuntu installation so you can see the two virtual machines I created running side by side. While my Ubuntu installation is going, I'm booting up Node 1 so you can see Node 1 starting up right there. And in the background, you can see my Ubuntu install going. My Red Hat virtual machine has come up. I'm just going to go ahead and log into my server and run some basic commands to see the system performance. All the time my Ubuntu install is running in the background. Now that my Ubuntu install is complete, I'm just going to go ahead and log. I'm going to go ahead and work in my Ubuntu desktop here and all the time my Red Hat server is running in the background. One of the nice features of VirtualBox is you can pause a state that you're in on one of your virtual machines. So if you want to come back to an exact point later but need to shut down your desktop for whatever reason, you can go ahead and pause into that state. Now I'm just going to shut down my Red Hat server like I normally would with my shutdown minus H command. And I'm all done. Don't forget to take a look at the help files. They have tons of useful information. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Please let me know what OS you installed in your virtual environment. May it be Ubuntu or CentOS. Let me know what you're trying out at home in your virtual environment. How do you like it? Just leave it in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks, guys. See you next time.